What's up beautiful people? I hope you are well. This is your maths coach. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Before we begin today's lesson, I have a favor to ask you. To help this channel grow, please subscribe and press that bell icon. Also, please share with your friends and your family and your neighbors, anybody that may benefit from the content on this channel. In this lesson, you are going to learn all about indices. You're going to learn how to multiply indices. You're going to learn how to divide indices. You're also going to learn what is meant by reciprocal and how to deal with fractional powers. So stay tuned. Now, before we begin, I want you to learn these rules here. Write them down, memorize them, make sure you are referring to them as we are doing the lesson. Okay, do that right now, guys. All right, so let's apply these rules here onto our example questions, all right? So if we have seven squared and we wanna multiply it with seven to the power of five, okay, what do we do? Both bases are the same, so we can apply our rule, which was a to the power of m times a to the power of n, and we just simply do m plus n, which is to add the two powers, and that gives two plus five, which is seven. So the answer is seven to the power of seven. In the next one, x to the power of five to the power of four. We've saw, we, we saw that if we have a to the power of m and you have a power outside, then you simply multiply the two powers. So here we're gonna do five times four, giving us x to the power of 20. Next, we've got b to the power of eight divided by b to the power of five. And we've seen that a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n, you simply do a to the power of m minus n, so you take away the two powers. So here, we're going to do 8, take away the 5, and that gives you 3. Now, this only works if the base numbers are the same, okay? That's very, very important. You can't apply it in other situations where the bases are different. We're going to look at those later on and see how to deal with those. All right, so now to warm you up a little bit, let's start with this one here. So first of all, we are only going to deal with the top here. So 7 to the power of 3 and 7 to the power of 5, we add the two powers together, and that gives us 7 to the power of 8. And then we just rewrite this, so 7 to the power of 6. Now we've seen with division, you take away the powers, so you do 8 take away 6, and that gives 7 squared. Now we're going to leave our answer in 7 squared, although we can write 49 if the question says evaluate. But if the question says leave your answer in index form, then that 7 to the power of 2 is the index form. Okay, let's leave this in the index form. So x to the power of 3 to the power of 6 divided by x to the power of 4. So first of all, we're going to deal with this by multiplying the two powers here. So 6 times by 3 is 18, and we're going to rewrite this as normal. And now they are dividing, so we're going to take the powers away. So therefore, x is equal to 18 minus 4, and that gives you x to the power of 14. Now, this is higher level GCSE work. Write 2 to the power of 3 times 4 to the power of 5 as a power of 2. So this, is, this 2 to the power of 3 is already in a power of 2. It's this that we need to change. How do we do that? You see, 4 can be rewritten. 4 in its own is 2 squared. And that 5 is outside. So all we've done is replace the 4 by writing it as 2 squared. You see, now we've got the base number of two. So we can start dealing with the index laws. Now that we have two squared, which is four, written like this, we can apply our rule, which is to multiply the two powers. So two to the power of 10. And now we have the multiplying. So we add the two powers. So two to the power of three plus 10. And that gives us 2 to the power of 13. So now you can see that we have rewritten all of this as a single power of 2. Now the next question is write 16 times 2 to the power of 6 as a power of 4. Neither of these have a base of 4. So we need to make change both of them. We need to change both of them. So 16 
can be written as 4 how? We know that 4 squared is 16. So 16 alone can be rewritten as 4 squared. And 2 to the power of 6. Now this is not so straightforward, but we have to still be able to do this. And the way that we are going to do this is we are going to borrow from some of this power here. Okay, so if we borrow, let's say, 2 squared, okay, that leaves us with only 3, because remember, 2 times 3 has to give you 6, and that still does. So as things stand, this is still 2 to the power of 6, because the 2 and the 3 will multiply. However, if you look inside that bracket, 2 squared is 4. So really, you've now got 4 cubed. So 4 squared times 4 cubed, now we've got everything as a power of 4, so therefore we just need to collect these two together by doing 2 plus 3, which is 5. So 4 to the power of 5, a single power of 4. Now we move on to the negative reciprocal. Let's see this in action. Now I've left this one deliberately uh, incomplete because I am going to complete this with you. Okay, but let's have a look at an example where we apply the first one. So if we have something like this, 7 to the power of minus 2. Whenever you see a minus in the power, straight away you have to use reciprocal. Okay, you need to remember this. So make a mental note of this. A negative in the power means 1 over. That's what reciprocal means. So it's going to be 1 over whatever you have. So you have 7 squared. So you see, there's no negative here because I've dealt with the negative by writing 1 over and you have 7 squared. And 7 squared is 49 and you could write this like that if you wanted to. Let's do another example of that one. So 5 to the power of minus 3. So we, the negative is going to mean 1 over. 1 over what? 5 cubed. We don't need to write them negative anymore because we've dealt with it. And 5 times 5 times 5, that gives you 125. So this here is the answer to that. And that is the application of that. One more, did you say? All right, one more then. All right, let's try this with um, 9. 9 to the power of minus 5. Okay, so what's it going to be? 1 over. That's what the negative wants you to do. And then you write 9 to the power of 5. Now, 9 to the power of 5 is going to be a large number on a calculator, so I'm just going to leave it like that because the aim is just to show you how that rule is applied. Now, this one, I said I'm going to complete with you. So now that you've seen how I've applied it on the first one, what would this be? Remember I said the negative means reciprocal. It doesn't matter what this number is, you write it underneath with that power. So 1 over A over B to the power of M. That's exactly what I said you need to do. You continue by doing 1 over A to the M and B to the M. You see that powers both of them. It powers both of them. So you've got this now. This is a special situation here. When you have something divided by a fraction, there is an explanation mathematically behind this, but I'm, I'm not going to go into that now. Just remember, you take the number right at the bottom and multiply it at the top. So if you multiply this right at the top, it will be 1 times b to the power of m, which gives us b to the power of m, and that would remain at the bottom here, and this is what you are left with. So we are going to apply this now. So minus, so 1 over 1 third squared. That square is going to do to both of those. So 1 over 1 squared, which is 1, we don't need to write that. And 3 squared is 9. And once again, the 9 will come and multiply right at the top. So you get 9 over 1, which is essentially just 9. I'm going to do one more time with another example. So we've got 5 over 2 here, minus 3. So we've got 5 over 2 to the power of minus 3. Once again, 1 over 5 over 2 cubed. So can you see what I've done with the negative? I've just done 1 over the entire number without the negative this time. Okay, So that 3 will power this and power that. So it will be 1 over 5 cubed over 2 cubed. And that gives us 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125. And 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 
and take the 8, multiply at the top, so you get 8 over 125. This next example says evaluate 5 to the power of 6 times 5 to the power of minus 2. Now evaluate means to find a final answer, so you don't leave it in an index form. Now you can, if you want to, do the reciprocal of this one separately and then bring this one in, but it's probably easier because you've got the bases the same just to add the two powers together at the top. So you do 6 plus minus 2, so 6 plus minus 2 is 4 and then because it said evaluate, we have to do 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, okay? And that gives us 625. Okay, now moving on to fractional indices. How do you deal with powers which have a fraction? So the rule is as follows. If you've got a to the power of 1 over m, you simply do the mth root of a. So that means if we had, for example, a to the power of a half, you simply square root a, like that, okay? And you power it with a 1, which we'll see later on. So this one, you'll mth root the a, and you power it by m. Let's do that with actual numbers. So if we have, for example, 27, to the power of 2 over 3. So we are going to do the root of 3 here. So the cube root of 27, and then we're going to power it with the numerator, square it. So the cube root of 27 is 3, and then 3 squared is equal to 9. So 9 is the answer to 27 to the power of 2 over 3. Let's take another example. Let's do 9 to the power of 3 over 2. So once again, this time round, what you're going to do, you're going to square root it because this is a 2 in the denominator. So it's going to be the square root of 9. Now we don't really need to write 2 here. That's, for anything else, you have to write the number. So if it's a cube root, you write the 3. But for square root, you don't need to write that. Okay? The sign in and of itself it recognizes that this is the square root and there's 2 there. Okay, so square root of 9, and then you power it by 3. So the square root of 9 is 3, and 3 to the power of 3 is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. All right, so what about this one? 1,000 to the power of 4 over 3. You do it, and then join me. Okay, so we are going to cube root 1,000, and then we're going to power it with a 4. So the cube root of... Uh, 1,000 is 10, and 10 to the power of 4 is 10 times 10 times 10, which is 10,000. So just to recap what happens in general terms, if you have a to the power of 5 over 2, you do the square root of a, and you power it with the 5. This is just an example, just to illustrate what we've done so far. Okay. On to some exam style questions. Have a look at these questions, try them for yourself first, um, pause the video and then come back. All right, so how do we do this? So we've got 5x to the power of 3 times 2x to the power of 4. We're going to deal with the coefficients first. That will follow by multiplying, okay? We're going to deal with the coefficients first, and that is simply to just do 5 times 2, which is 10 and 10x, and the powers, because both of them have the same bases, uh, we're just going to add the two powers here. So that's 3 plus 4, which is 7, and the answer to this, simplified, is 10x to the power of 7. On to this next question here. You've got 2a squared in a bracket to the power of 4. The 4 is powering everything inside that bracket. And this is a mistake that people often make, that they forget to power this number here, okay? So you're going to do 2 to the power of 4, and a, remember that uh, multiplication here? That's going to apply, so 2 times 4 is 8, so you have 2 to the power of 4, a8. But we can't leave 2 to the power of 4 like that, we have to find what this answer is. So that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. So you get 16a to the power of 8, and that's the answer for that one. Now, 
I've put this one here because we haven't had an opportunity to discuss this one, but b to the power of zero. Anything to the power of zero is gonna always equal one. So here, you're gonna have 12 times one, so therefore that's gonna be 12, because this is always equal to one. And our finale for indices now, four over nine to the power of minus three over two. Try yourself first and then come back and join me. All right, so what do we have? We, got, we are gonna first of all deal with that negative. Remember what I said? I said one over everything else. So four over nine to the power of three over two, okay? And then we continue dealing with that. So. 3 over 2 is going to individually affect both of those terms. So it's a 4 squared to the power of 3 over 9 squared to the power of 3. 4 squared is 2, so it's going to be 1 over 2 cubed. Square root of 9 is 3, so it's going to be 3 to the power of 3. And then we have 1 over 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 3 to the power of 3 is 27, and that 27 is going to come and multiply right at the top here, so you end up with 27 over 8, and that is your final answer. You could leave it like that, or you can make this into a mixed number, so how many 8s go into 27? We know that 3 8s go into 27, a remainder of 3, and then 3 8s is what's left. So 3 and 3 is the final answer. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please share with your friends and family if you found this beneficial and please help the channel to grow. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.